This is old ham. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about the Oscars and, and our predictions. And our predictions. We're also going to tell you what the other people's predictions are too. So we're. You know, so we can basically debate because we've actually seen most of the nominees. I know, actually, this is cool because we have. A lot of times we're doing it based on what everybody else has said and who's won it. But this year we can actually tell you about some of these movies if you haven't seen them already. Yeah, we have the, um, the artist, we have the best picture, the artist, the help, Hugo, the descendants, Moneyball, Midnight in Paris, the Tree of Life, the War Horse, and Extremely Loud and Incredible Close. Well, basically this is... This is what you would think is a gimme because everybody says the same thing. What? The artist is going to be the best picture. Yeah. It's what every award there is to well, win. Well, okay, now we were talking about the Descendants because Descendants got a Golden Globe. And why can they? Because the Golden Globes, uh, some of this, some of the things allow it in, in two different areas. They allow it for comedy and drama. The artist is a melodrama, which means it has comedic elements in it. The art, you know, and uh, the the Descendants is totally politically correct. The artist isn't. The artist is in black and white. The Descendants is based upon um, uh, a family called the King family in Hawaii, and basically it's politically correct to slam the wealthy. Mm -hmm. But it's not winning anything. I mean, the artist has won every award it has been nominated for in Best Picture since it was in, out and released. I mean, I. She came into the artist at the end of the thing, and um, I know out of all the ones, I because I had to go cover another event, yeah, and I so I was there for the Q and A, got to listen to it, but I didn't get to see actually see the movie. Which yeah, I, I, I got to see the movie, and it's actually a homage to Greta Garbo and John Gilbert. It's, mm -hmm. If you go about that, except it's done in more of a funny manner. But they they said unless something horrible goes wrong. And if something horrible goes wrong, it's going to damage the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences forever. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't lose, they just won the BAFTA Award a week ago, mm -hmm. which is the British version of the Oscars. They've ran the film. This guy also took the Berlin Film Festival yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, there's, it, they're not lost ever. So if they lose once in a year, it ain't going to be the Oscars. And then we got the Best Director, which is... Um, you know, which is uh, Michael Hasnavis was the artist, which basically Martin Scorsese, Hugo, Terrence Malick, The Tree of Life, Alexander Payne, The Descendants, and Woody Allen, Midnight in Paris. Uh, basically, uh, they've not exactly ever went against. In, I think in a 57-year history of the of the Directors Guild, they've not went against the director. Now here, here's something you have to understand: Best Picture is voted on by everybody in the Academy. Directors have voted for directors, artists vote for artists, uh, the writers, composers so, vote for composers, So, and they all have had their award shows. So if there's been a Directors Guild Award, typically whoever won that will win the Oscar. Yeah, it, it, so, so get, and we uh, already, uh, the artist won the Directors Award two weeks ago, so mm -hmm. guess who's going to win that no matter what. We mm -hmm. got, here's the one that's the problem though. Best Actor, John D. Shaw Down, The Artist, George Clooney, The Descendants, Brad Pitt, Moneyball, Gary Oldman, Tinker Taylor, and uh, Damien Barris, The Better Life. Here is the problem. Now, why are you saying this was the problem? Uh, because here is where they're saying that, um, okay, there has been rumors in the past uh, that the uh, Academy has not approved of who was voted for, and they uh, the, what was on the card was not read. The expectation oh. is that they are going to read the name George Clooney. Um, what happens if they don't read the name that's on the card? They think it's happened in the past. Yeah, and but nothing, what happens? Because the, what happens is the person, the cards are kept by Price Waterhouse out of the hands of the Academy. What they do. Is to, is to tell a presenter, which they do, it's just a rumor that the presenter is told, um, George Clooney's going to win this thing regardless of who said the card. Oh, yeah, Clooney's one of us. Remember, I heard him say that, oh, you know, you that basically they referred to John Garden as that goddamn Frenchman. Well, but, but here's part of it. He's been winning all the awards. Oh, he's won. Plenty's never won one, except the ones where they could duplicate drama and comedy. Every uh, time they, they got a duplicate, books. they can do it. But but we're talking Cannes Film Festival. We're talking uh, Toronto. We're talking Paris. We're talking Berlin. We're talking Venice. 
Every film festival in the world is named John John which is John Garden in English. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but um, the best actress is basically this is the okay. You got this. Why do you say this one's iffy? The, who's up for this? Is Viola Davis for The Help? Meryl Streep for The Iron Lady? Michelle Williams for My Week with Marilyn, Glenn Close for Albert Knobs, and Rooney Mara, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm -hmm. Well, they eliminate Williams, Close, and, and Mara, and it comes down to two people, which is Viola Davis and Meryl Streep. They, uh, they just ran a nasty little piece in a publication about how it's, uh, that basically this is an old white boys club over at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're trying to do that to basically force the Academy to say, you know, if Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep's won two Oscars in her life, and the other girl hasn't won any, she's never going to get another opportunity. That's a gimme, you know, because uh, there's only so many roles for so many people in the world, and it's like a one, here's your chance, it's a once in a lifetime part. Do you give it to the one that's had a once in a lifetime part who's black, or do you give it to the old white person that's got two Oscars already? And it's going to have another, because she gets nominated, I think she got nominated. She gets nominated times. all the time. So part of it is, are you doing it because of um, political pressure, or are you doing what they've actually voted on? Oh, I, I remember, I, I'm, I'm watching the day, the, the day the Best Actor and Best Actress was won by Danzo Washington and Halle Berry. Halle Berry said, I know this is the black guy's night, but I don't care. I'll take it. He'll take it. You know, he knew that he wasn't getting the award because he wanted. He got the award because this was well, the night they gave the awards out to black people. Yeah, but at least those were, those were if you want to call it, people that had a history oh, of acting. Pally Berry's been around for a long she, time. Uh, yeah, she's done a lot of things. And she stretched the boundaries of her abilities in, in the movie she did, but um, uh, Monster's Ball. But um, it should have went to another performer, but they figured Halle Berry was never going to give you another role like that. So, mm -hmm. so, but they're thinking, they're thinking Viola Davis, even though it should be Meryl Streep. Didn't Street. she just get an award for something? They both got awards. Oh, okay. They, and she got the NAACP award, but, um, oh, and, uh, but, but put it this way, the people that vote for the award gave the award to Meryl Streep. Uh. And heavily Meryl Streep. Okay. So. Next, best supporting actor, Christopher Plummer for The Beginners, Max and Vaughn Sadal for Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Kenneth Branagh for My Week with Marilyn, Jonah Hill for Moneyball, and Nick Nolte for Warrior. Because you know that it, it was supposed to be Nolte's. Nolte, Nolte's and Albert Brooks were supposed to be the main competition, but the problem is, is that uh, Vaughn Cito and Christopher Plummer are both 84 years old. And may never get another opportunity. Now Christopher Plummer, he was very good in that. Oh, he was good. He was playing a, he was playing a guy who finally decided he was gay after being a lifetime of being straight. But he keeps from, he from San Francisco Pope. I mean, Oakland, I'm precise. So what would you think an art director from Oakland would be? Sort of really hard to, you know, but he, he was good in the role. It's the guy that refused to admit that he was dying. Well, he refused to admit he was gay all his life, so why, why admit that he's dying? And Max Sadal said, well, he said a lot. Max von Sato has been nominated one time. Yes, no, or was it no, yes? No, but they said, this is a, uh, okay, these are the two who have been flipping the coin. Mm -hmm. It's von Sito, it's Plummer, it's von Sito, it's Plummer, it's von Sito, it's Plummer. The one with the, okay, von Sato started out in um, Ingemar Bergman movies um, in, in Sweden. Von, but Plummer is an American. He's been doing stuff for 60 years in our country. And they figure he, you know, Von Saito is actually still a very vibrant actor at 84. He's actually got a future ahead of him where mm -hmm. I have seen um, Christopher Plummer is really starting to, the wear and tear of this movie has been too much on him. Mm -hmm. He's gotten, the, I mean, Christopher Plummer was always known as God awful, the best looking actor in the world. I mean, most of the people remember him from, you know, like the sound of music for, and all the things he's done on the stage. He is an American that is due. Fonsito, you know, because, I mean, uh, I think, was it uh, 49 years ago, Christopher Plummer got the, well, he got nominated for Sound of Music, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but Fonsito, which is the funny thing, Fonsito, they think it has more of a career ahead of him. Mm. 84, he's got more of a career ahead of him. That's pretty good. So Christopher it, Plummer, maybe yeah, not. And then here's the one which is basically, 
Best Supporting Actress. Which they got two in the same movie. Um, we got Octavia Spencer from The Help, Melissa McCarthy from Bridesmaids. This is kind of unusual for a comedy to get um, some of these. Um, Bernice Bio. That's the Bio. that's the guy who's the director's wife from The Artist. The Artist, Jessica Jessica Chastain from The Help, and Janet McTeer from Albert Knobs. Okay, they they eliminated Bernadette Bio right off the bat because Why? she's a co-star in the movie. She's not a supporting actress, and everybody knows it. Oh, so they just eliminated her from that? They movie? eliminated her because she stepped down because she couldn't, they weren't going to put her in the best actress, oh. so they dropped her down. When she dropped down, that just tossed her out the window, so she's gone. That's kind of interesting. And uh, Melissa McCarthy and, and Janet McTeer, they never had a chance. Down to the two women from, from Help. the Help, Octavia Spencer and Jessica Chastain. And once again, they have been flipping the coin. And I haven't seen that movie yet, so oh, I've why got it. Tell? Basically, it's a chick. It's a chick. It's flip. a chick flick. It's a chick flick. But um, but uh, Chastain just won the Screen Actors Guild Award. Mm -hmm. And uh, so generally, that would mean the favor is, is on her side. But unfortunately, Octavia Spencer is Afro-American. Um, have you been looking at the, what the, the odds oh, are? Yeah, the Vegas the, odds? Okay, the odds are favoring Chastain heavily, but they said after the vicious attack, I, I'm over on the technical site on Facebook, and they are eating up the Academy Awards over there. The Oscar people just being chewed to pieces about being, well, they're all a bunch of white guys. Mm -hmm. And now they're backing, well, yeah, we're trying to diversify, but you have to understand there's so few people out there that are being, there. it said, we have no control over who's being hired to act in movies. No, they don't. But they said, you people must open up the, I mean, Denzel Washington is on the open up the list, and I mean, my side is really squawking about the fact, and if you squawk enough, they don't want the bad publicity, so you can almost... The, uh, even though the odds favor... Yeah, but all the results are supposed to be in. Oh, yeah, they could just change it from no, political uh, correctness. No, no, uh, here. You, there, there's the... Uh, yeah, there's, there's the new results. There's the new results, you know. They hand you a piece of paper and say that uh, somebody's won. So. Mm -hmm. Here's one, here's the odd one, which is best adapted screenplay. Alexander Payne, The Descendants. Stan Gervin, Aaron Sorkin, Moneyball, John Hogan, Hugo, Bridget O'Connor, Tinker Taylor, and George Clooney, The Eyes of March. If George Clooney hasn't been a horse's ass, it was George Clooney's. Everyone admits that The uh, Eyes of March is the best one out there, but he's been such a pissant about wanting to be best actor that he got bounced. And it's now between Alexander Payne and, um, uh, and Hugo. And, and the winner from the Writers Guild was Poets. Oh, really? Did they have two different categories, or did they give them a tie? They have one is, a con one is from Adapted, oh. and the other is Original. Okay, so... so I know. Uh, you know well, you got fact, it, they're the both Adapted, one. but the problem is one isn't as Adapted as the other. Well, and then the next category is Best Original. Story. Yeah, but they're giving it, they gave it to both of them in a the thing, so... Because then over there they consider one is not adapted according to the rules and the other is. So here is the one of best original. It does not exist, as you know, because there is no sure winner of this one. Payne, they expect Payne to win because Payne already has an Academy Award for writing. And mm -hmm. generally they'll be with the same person. But this is a good one because um, Woody Allen is going to win by default. You don't even have to go any further. Woody Allen is winning Why by default. Why are you saying he's winning by default? Because the, the, uh, the guy that won the best original is over in the best adapted over on the Oscars. So they said by default the Academy will give the award to Woody Allen. Oh. So it doesn't even, they said to, this is the one thing they agree on They didn't even default. get to hear the rest of them. I know. Okay, which is Michael has the artist. A, has Michael's a, from the artist. It's like has an ambitious French or Jewish or one, which okay. they got really bad. Name. Annie Marmolo and Kristen from Bridesmaids, J.C. Chandler from Margin Call, and Asghar Farhadi for a separation. Yeah. But they um, they they said uh, uh, basically well, this is the the first time in the history that the Academy has put. Um, two people from one category in the, in the same 
two people that have won the award in the same category because the rules of the Writers Guild are different than the rules of the Academy. So um, it, it, it's weird, but uh, we have this one, Best Animated Feature Film, which is the, 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 the Disney didn't even get a nomination this year. Can you Are you serious? That? I know. None? Disney None. usually does. In the animation category? Not in the animation category. They didn't get a nomination this year. Wow. Okay. Number one, Rango, who actually we thought... I don't know if you've seen it, but we thought it would have been nominated for more things than just this. Well, we thought it was going to be nominated in a lot of areas, and it didn't. So it... Number two, Puss in Boots. Number three, Kung Fu Panda. Four, Chico and Rita. And five is A Cat in Paris. Which now, is funny. The last two I okay. haven't even heard of. This is the way the, wor the world works. If your movie plays in Los Angeles, it can qualify for an Academy Award and not be released. I know, but I've never even heard of those Chico, last The two. one movie did, Chico, just, I just got the press material on it last night. Are you serious? It's being released next week. Why? So, But it played here. But it's all Rango, folks. They said because it's Johnny Depp and it's a cartoon, it's all it is is Johnny Depp playing Johnny Depp. So, you know, it also... And, and we like John Depp. Yeah, it's also made 250 million bucks, which means it's an oddity because they're trying to do... The one thing... <laughs>